Yes, uh, dear viewers, uh, welcome you once again on today's live show. We're going to be a prominent consultant, and uh, you know that uh, in the caption you can see uh, today's live show basically on uh, one of the state university based in university state uh, in based in USA, uh, especially Newark, and uh, this is our actually our university partner from USA. And uh, today we have a very special guest uh, from this university, uh, who is Mr. Sim from State University of Newark Polytechnic Institute, which is based in Newark and it's a public university. And they have very good offer. They have very good programs uh, for international students, uh, especially in some specific uh, subjects. So, uh, Sim, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for joining this live session. And I would like to uh request you uh, like to say hello to our viewers and uh, of course please introduce yourself to all of our audience hi um how are you guys doing my name is ZTech. i am the deputy director for international admissions and student services my office is basically responsible for all the international admissions for undergraduate and graduate programs um, we are located in upstate new york which is far away from new york city in a town called Utica, New York. Um, we are the State University of New York system. So um, basically my office will assist uh, international students with the CPT, which is the internship, or PT, which is the work permit for 12 months and uh, to, to the additional, um, you know, 24 months. Exactly, thank you so much. So dear viewers, I'd like to uh, request you if you're watching this live session, so please you can share this live session in your timeline. So some people, uh, you know that there are a few people or some people they could be interested for studying U USA because as we know that the USA is one of the most popular destination uh, to our students and uh, most people they would like to study in USA, uh, in, especially in IT and uh, engineering side. So definitely this live will continue till uh, one hour and we'll, we'll uh, discuss about all the topics about study in USA and of course about this university, State University of Newark Polytechnic Institute. We'll discuss about their all matters, including courses, entry requirements, scholarship. They have very good scholarship uh, scheme. Definitely they have graduate assistantship as well for their program. So definitely we'll discuss one by one and what are the opportunities after your graduation in USA so uh, please be with us and if you have any specific query if you have any specific query regarding studying usa or about this university so you are you just feel free to ask us we'll try to give uh, all the answers on live and also before uh, asking any question please mention your academic details your uh, ilts score and everything so that we can uh, we can give you the proper um, answer so uh sim uh, how how are you and how is everything over there because now we are facing a very tough time and especially new york is one of them because new york is the city that they are facing the most the toughest time at this moment so i mean how is the present condition of new york city and how you are facing the things well um right now in new york state um new york is a state okay so new york city is is only I mean, it's far away from our campus. We are located in central New York. But anyway, New York State's, um, you know, the infection rates are actually going down. I'm sure you can read you know, newspapers and all that. Um, still, New York State or New York City is not going to open, uh, you know, the restaurants and all that because um, we just don't have enough testing right now. But again, when New York State opened the economy, meaning the restaurants and universities and all that, it all depends on the location, okay? So for example, SUNY Poly State University, you know, my university is actually located in the middle of New York State. So we are far away from New York City, especially because we are very spacious and we are not crowded university and all that. Our population is only 200,000 students, I mean 200,000 populations. So most likely when New York State is going to open, it's going to open uh, for those small cities far away from New York City because that's where the infection rate is really, really low. So right now we are just waiting for the governor, New York State governor, to decide which regions, which area in the state of New York will be opening for the economy, opening for the university. So right now 
you know, at Utica, which is the town, uh, a town or city that, you know, the university is located, we have about, I don't know, maybe less than 100 cases like that. So what it means is we are more likely to be open faster than New York City itself. Exactly, exactly. And the things are, you know, that being improved day by day. So definitely we are thinking positively. Let's see how it goes. So uh, Sim, just I need to know, uh, as you know, that the USA or United States of America, it's a very popular destination, especially uh, for higher studies. The people from Bangladesh and from other parts of the world, they are very need to go to USA for their higher studies to pursue their bachelor or master's program because us uh, everyone says that most of the people are saying that usa is the country of opportunities i mean especially uh, us is like you know that the uh, the world economy actually exists there the world best economy so uh, the thing is that uh, there are a lot of universities right there are a lot of universities public and private uh, in uh, usa so suny poly is one of them uh, state university of new york so i mean would you please say something about the history of your university and um, about the background of your university and why it is exactly located and why it could be the best option in what purpose so could you please explain all this matter well the state university of new york Pali, um, we have 64 campuses throughout new york state you only can find new york state university of new york of course only in new york state you don't find it in california or florida so under the SUNY system, which is the University of New York system, we have 64 campuses. Um, all the 64 campuses, we are basically running our own admissions. So there is no standard admissions requirement, um, even though they are the brothers and sister campuses. So, so I am actually representing SUNY Polytechnic Institute. Okay, so, so we will recruit our own students. We, we award students, eligible students for undergraduate a scholarship of twenty eight thousand to thirty four thousand um, dollars for graduate assistant for, for for graduate students who are majoring in computer science network and computer security they will get twelve thousand dollars as a graduate assistantship the graduate assistantship is not a scholarship it's basically a job on campus what it means is you will work about 20 uh, 15 hours per week uh, you get paid twenty dollars and fifty cents per hour. So basically, you get paid once every two weeks. So by the end of the semester, you accumulate over four thousand dollars. So the four thousand dollars is enough to cover your expenses living in Utica. Remember, because Utica is four hours away from New York City, the living expenses are really, really low. On average, if you share apartment outside the campus with with the other international students, it's about two hundred dollars, one hundred eighty dollars per month. That's it's just your rent. You know, it includes utilities and all that. So for students, um, you know, um, because again, we, we have we have so many opportunities in the United States. I mean, we have over four million IT jobs unfilled in this country. Okay, so we've been help, helping international students coming here. After they finish the study, we help them with the we help them to gain their internship, which is outside the campus. Students can work outside the campus after one year. That's an internship, okay, CPT. And then once students finish the study, we help students with the OPT, which is 12 months work permit, with additional two more years if you are in the STEM category. For example, if you're a business student with a, a business major, you only allow 12 months to work in the United States. But if you are computer science, you know, science uh, STEM category, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, you are, you are eligible for 12 months work permit, plus another two more years of work permit. So that's the difference. Again, um, most of the students come to our university, we offer, like I said, scholarship um, for undergraduate students, as well as uh, GA for graduate students. Okay. So I just, uh, my uh, question was actually like, I mean, why people should choose SUNY Poly? I mean, there are a lot of universities. What are the unique points of SUNY Poly? And uh, we just need to know about the location because location is a very important uh, concern uh, by the students. So they always choose a particular location or preferable location for the study destination because some students, they have relatives, some students, they have friends. So they always prefer to some known place which is very familiar to them. 
so in that case we just need to know how the location is and uh, i hope that uh, in your campus already international students are studying there so how many students you have in the campus and how many of them are international and from south asia how many students are there well we our university is very small we have about 3000 students total population 3000 um international student about 250 of them which is less than 10 percent of the of the of the total student population uh, most of the students are graduate students they are mostly from india i would say about 90 percent are from india they are majoring in computer science and network and computer security in their master degree program and most of the students have a ga of twelve thousand dollars so when you think of ga okay each time when we accept students coming to our university our visa, our visa approval rate is really high. What that means is because when students have an I-20, okay, if the I-20 indicate $12,000 GA or scholarship of $28,000 or $34,000, the student can easily get their visa approval because you already show to the U.S. Consular Office in Bangladesh that you're a good student. Therefore, you see, you know, that's why you, you've been awarded with a GA or, or, or scholarships. As far as for why we you to choose uh, SUNY Pali is because the most important thing is you ask yourself, after your master degree or your bachelor degree, what do you want? Basically, we want to look for a job, right? So basically, we have over 100 companies that we have been working and collected over since 2014. Those companies are actually hiring F1 students like you guys based on your education background. And most of them are IT because right now IT is the most sought demand career opportunity employment in the United States. That's why, um, you know, if you choose a university, you want to make sure, you know, after two years, after four years, you know, whatever years you spend, will the university help you to find employment? Remember, every university in the US has a career service center, has a placement center. They don't know which companies they engage with that they are interested in hiring students, international students. Most of these companies listed in their office are basically for domestic students because they are mainly, you know, they are the larger population. So yeah, so if you can, if you think about this, this, this opportunity, I mean, you can talk to other university when you apply to any university, ask them, can I have a list of companies that are actually truly hiring students like you from Bangladesh. I mean, we have, I would say we have three Bangladeshi students um, for undergraduate degree program. And we also have a couple of them from Bangladesh too, in the, uh, pursuing um, graduate program in computer science. You can visit our website, okay? And, 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 your, and your senior, you know, your, your citizen actually on the website and she, and she was in the, I would say electrical engineering technology area, and she is now working in New York City. I mean, that's why we help students to 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 find company that are actually hiring international students. We steer you to the right direction instead of you sending out your resume. You don't know which company is going to hire you, right? So we still we give you these one hundred companies. Truly, you can Google them and find the employment down there. Exactly. So, Sim, uh, we have a video of Utica campus, so we'll have this video now, okay? And after yeah. that, we'll discuss the other parts of the discussion. So, let's have the video first. Wondering where the future will take you at SUNY Poly? It's about where we are taking the future. We take dreams and aspirations, ingenuity and wild ideas, and create new opportunities breaking the molds of science and business, redefining standards of nursing and healthcare, eliminating boundaries from engineering and the arts for a chance to change the world. We are students and faculty, entrepreneurs and corporate partners, studying, researching, and developing new ideas together, testing theories in real world scenarios, and exploring uncharted territory to deliver a brighter tomorrow for the community we work in, compete in, and play in. We make the most of every moment, whatever the moment holds. We seize every opportunity to learn, to lead, 
to live. The question is not where the future is taking you, but where will you take the future? The journey begins here at SUNY Poly. To learn more, visit sumipoly.edu. Yes, so, so it's, it's a nice video about SUNY Poly. And um, it seems that we'd like to know about the courses. I mean, uh, the courses you're offering, because so far I know that you have both uh, undergrad and postgrad programs. So would you please tell me what are the subjects you're offering in your undergrad level and what are the subjects you're offering in master's level, I mean, in postgraduate level? Well, um, our undergraduate program, it ranges from business, applied mathematics, different kinds of engineering, like for example, civil engineering, civil engineering technology, uh, mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering technology, electrical and computer technology, you know, stuff like that. Together with our business as well, we have psychology. So, so we have all range of um, undergraduate degree program. Um, the admissions for all these undergraduate degree program is very, very straightforward. We require at least a B on your high school uh, grades. Um, and then we also give options. We give five or six options for your test, which is your proficiency test. Um, you can choose either TOEFL, um, IELTS, PTE, Duolingo, SAT, or ACT. So you can choose either one of them to submit your test score. These are these are all, I mean, SAT is optional. So let's say if you don't do SAT, do your TOEFL, or do your IELTS, or do your Duolingo. So you only can choose one or submit one or two, it, it all depends on you know what, what you want to do. So basically, um, we make it very straightforward, very easy. Um, when you submit the application, all you have to do is you know submit the application online, and then you can email me your high school transcripts, and then you can submit your either TOEFL or IELTS or other test scores. So we make it very straightforward. So we based on these two things, based on these two documents to make decision, whether you get $28,000 scholarship or $34,000 scholarship. So basically, this is our undergraduate uh, programs, very straightforward, one high school transcript, email, everything will be emailed. There is no FedEx, there is no hard copy. So until you are accepted, then we will ask you for the hard copy when you arrive to the campus, okay? And so this is our undergraduate, for graduate in computer science and network and computer security, which is essentially cybersecurity. Um, if you are admitted, you are eligible for a $12,000 graduate assistantship, okay? Remember the graduate assistantship or GA or TA, teaching assistant, these are not scholarship. What it means is, like I say, you have to work on campus. So basically, our master degree in computer science, cybersecurity, you are eligible for $12,000. Very straightforward too. You know, you email us your transcript, which at least a B. Um, you can submit either TOEFL, IELTS, PTE, Duolingo, I can't remember, uh, or ITAC. Um, and then you have to submit, of course, your GRE too. Your GRE score must be at least 153 on the quantitative reasoning. So basically three things, okay? Your transcript, your either GRE, your GRE score, your TOEFL or IELTS score. So it's very straightforward. Everything will be emailed. So there is no hard copy of FedEx and all that. So once you are accepted, okay, um, then you will send us or you will give us a transcript upon arrival. We also have PhD program too. Our PhD program is in nanoscale science, nanoscale engineering. You must have a bachelor degree or a master degree in physical science, material science, um, different kinds of engineering. Um, if you are a PhD student, you are also eligible for $25,000 per year, including in addition to the $25,000, you also get a uh, full tuition waiver, meaning you don't have to pay a single cent towards the tuition. And you still get the $25,000 a year. This is research job on campus. So by the end of the year, you make about $25,000. So every month, all this income that you generated through your research on campus is enough to cover your off-campus housing and all that. Okay, that's great. So I would like to, we, we will talk about your master's and PhD later on, but before we need to clear about the undergrad courses. 
like uh, as you have said that you have under uh, undergraduate programs in business in engineering in computer so you have uh, mostly in those subjects so uh, i mean i think of course all these subjects are four years program right so uh, four years program so i mean what will be what should be the academic average they should have to enroll in in those program in, in class 12 okay so 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 let's say if you meet the minimum admissions this is for undergraduate okay let me go back again average student will spend about four years okay to get a bachelor degree okay the four years is basically if you only take a minimum of four subjects every semester then it will take you four years to complete your degree but if you are good, okay, so if you are good, you are allowed to register up to seven subjects per semester. So if you if you are if you, if you are capable, you know, it's not everybody can do it, okay. So you have it all depends on you, okay. If you are capable, take more classes. So every semester, if you take more classes, you can finish in three years or three and a half years, depending on how many subjects you take. So the yes, minimum but my uh, my question was that what kind of result? I mean, what kind of academic? Oh yeah, I mean, I just want to be in a track well. yeah. Yes, yes. So yeah, so, so for undergraduate, um, without without scholarship, you have to have at least a B or 80%. So don't, not too worried about the, you know, the grades and all that because we have different conversion with the Bangladeshi grading system. So at least a B, and then your, your TOEFL must be 79, or your IELTS is 6.0, or your Duolingo is 105, your PTE is 53, okay? So this is the minimum without any scholarship. scholarship. Okay. Yes. So, so now you I, uh, I know you have two scholarships. One is uh, 28,000. First of all, I need to know about the tuition fees. I mean, what but is the yeah, The tuition is about $8,600 per semester. Per semester, $8,600 per semester, which is without scholarship. Without okay, scholarship. So now, scholarship so that means it's coming six uh, sixteen thousand us dollar or seventeen thousand us dollar in a year right so uh, yes but there are other expenses as well for for all first year hmm. freshman first year undergraduate student okay the first two year you must live on campus okay exactly. the campus is single room double room and triple room okay so of course the double is about seven thousand dollars per semester the uh, sorry the single is about seven thousand per, per semester the double is about six thousand per semester and then the triple which is three students in one room everybody has their own beds it's about five thousand some dollars per semester so you have to add in all those those costs as well so after okay. two years you can move out and, and live outside the campus okay so so if i say like yeah, if the tuition fee is seventeen thousand year per year and without scholarship i'm meaning so and after that ten thousand is adding i mean one year uh, for the accommodation so it's almost 30 to 30 32 thousand including housing and everything yes. in a year without yeah. scholarship yeah. okay so you have two kind of scholarship one is like uh twenty eight thousand uh and another one is 34 or 36 thousand something like that so yeah. is it for the whole fees for whole four years fees or uh, yeah okay so so if you have at least 90 percent on in your uh, in the high school and then your your TOEFL is one one your TOEFL is oh, sorry your SAT is 110 1100 if your SCT is 25 um your TOEFL is 90 and above you will get the twenty eight thousand dollars merit scholarship the 28,000 is divided into four years. So what that means is with the, with the 28,000, your per year scholarship is 7,500, okay? okay? 7,500. So our tuition is about $16,000. So if you take the $16,000 per year minus out your 7,500, you, you are paying about $5,000 per semester. So one year is $10,000, right? $10,000, exactly. Right. So and, this is uh, 28000 Yes, and what about and the, the 34? Time? Yeah, the 34 is the same too. You know, the, t the tuition is $8,600 per, per semester. So if you have 34000 which means one year is $8,000, per semester is 4000 So basically your tuition is $4,000 per semester. 
Okay. Everything so, else yeah. remains the same. You know, the housing and everything, the cost will be the same. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so for uh, for the thirty four thousand scholarships, so they need they need to have IL seven point five, right? Uh yes, so, seven point five, and then uh, your your TOEFL must be, I believe, it's ninety five percent out of one hundred twenty. Okay. Um, and then your IELTS, I believe, is seven point five. Yeah. 7.5. Okay. So, dear viewers, what uh, Sim has explained that about your, their undergraduate courses, that there are some uh, like scholarship scheme, like uh, for the without scholarship, the entry requirement is out, of course, be average. And of course, you should have IL6 uh, to get into the program without any scholarship. And uh, if you are looking for scholarship, then definitely you should have 90% above average. And of course, you should have seven or seven point five in ILTS so that you can obtain or you can achieve twenty-eight thousand US dollar to twenty uh, thirty-four thousand US dollar scholarship. Depends on your background, and it will be like for for from the whole fees, whole four years fees, you need it will be deducted. Uh, so, okay, so yeah, the tuition fee seventeen thousand. So if you get twenty-eight thousand so per year, it's coming seven thousand. So it will be deducted from your tuition fees, seventeen thousand. So it will be only ten thousand in a year. And the condition is uh, to study in SUNY Poly that you must take the, the university accommodation at least for first two years, uh, which cost around the minimum cost. Uh, there are a lot of categories. There are some few uh, few categories as well, but at the minimum cost that could be like 10000 per year for the living i mean for the university uh, accommodation so it is it is very compulsory for undergrad level so uh, yes and uh, the for undergrad level actually for undergrad level see what kind of documents they should submit uh, for application and what will be the application fees the application fee is 50 dollars okay and basically once you submit the application okay you can email me your high school uh, certificate okay mm -hmm. and then you have to request ETS for your either TOEFL or you know or, or I or, or you know IELTS or, or PTE score so once I receive these two documents um, you don't like I say you don't have to send me a copy email me um, then we'll make decision on that based on you know whether you're eligible for twenty eight thousand dollars or thirty four thousand dollars or maybe no scholarships okay. so two documents basically to start with once you are accepted Okay, once you're accepted to, to, for us to, to create your I-20, we need to have your bank statement. So the bank statement will be the last, last stage, meaning after you are accepted with scholarship or without scholarship, then we will ask you for your bank statements. Some university wants everything together, but we, we, we give you a little bit time to prepare. For example, you know, like I said, the first two things is your transcript, your high school grades, email me and then with your test score either IELTS, PT, SAT or whatever. Once these are accepted, then we will ask for your bank statement. Okay. And, and uh, so far I know that uh, actually the now I-20 is not required to come by post. Uh, so yeah. by email also it can be accepted, right? Yeah, so because of, yeah, be yeah, because of the pandemic right now. So the government approved all these I-20 can be soft copy emailed to student, and this will be sufficient enough for students to apply for their F-1 visa. F-1 visa, exactly. So uh, we'll have a video of your residence. Uh, let's have the video first, okay? And then we'll go for the other topics. Twenty-five buildings in Adirondack. Each one can house up to sixteen students and four students to a seat. Each suite does have a common area with couches, tables, and TV stands for the students. They don't have to necessarily go outside if the weather isn't that great. They can relax with each other indoors. A majority of Adirondack receive new furniture, chairs, tables, beds, uh, desks, and dressers. So the majority of our furniture has been updated. There are laundry areas in each side of the complex, north and south, that the students can use to do their laundry, dry their clothes. Each building has a picnic bench outside so that the students can study outside if it's nice out. We also have new bike racks and they're very visible because of the bright blue color. There is a lounge in the central building where the mailboxes are with a TV, a projector, a pool table, football table for the students to go and relax. The residence hall itself has a very nice quaint view, a lot of foliage in the area so it's a nice quiet area to live in if students want to hang out, play volleyball or grill. There's a lot of space for that as well. 
I love Mohawk. Um, I remember when I first applied here, I really wanted Mohawk. We have masters, uh, degree, students that are living there, we have seniors, juniors, sophomores. The RAs are available in the evening. They're usually sitting there from 7 to 10. You can just pop in and chat with them. There's a study room and a nice conference table, a couple of couches. The area where the lounge is, there's a TV, pool table. And that parlor complex also has a laundry room. Um, it has six high efficiency washers and seven dryers. All of the rooms are essentially the same. We'll have a common room when you walk in the uh, main door, couch in there, and a coffee table. There's going to be a bathroom there. There's two sinks, shower area. There. There's four single rooms. Mohawk is uh, unique in that it's the only building on campus that only has singles. There's no doubles in Mohawk. Air conditioners in Mohawk are pretty strong. It makes the rooms and the units very comfortable. It's a nice mix of people. You can't really look at Mohawk and say that it's just one type of person. I love it because it's a very dynamic community. Copy houses are in residence life, uh, right in our lounge. You can see part of it here. And, uh, you know, we set up a table with our creamers and all the fixings you could possibly put in your coffee. We have teas, we have hot cocoa, donuts, different fruits. It usually runs for about two hours and it kind of falls in line with our core value and our change relationship. And we just like chatting with them, finding out how the day is going. And you never really know how the conversation is going to go. It really is dictated by, you know, what the student is going through that day. We do have a popcorn machine here at Res Life and uh, it usually is run almost constantly. Always ready for students to pop in and just, you know, grab a little snack on the roof class. This lounge area is an amazing space. We've set it up so that they can come in and study if they'd like to. Um, it's also a place for them to come and unwind. We uh, have games and puzzles and things set up for them to just come in. If we need to take 10 or 15 minutes and they just want to get away and, you know, kind of recharge their batteries. Almost like our charging station over there for their cell phones. It's just a very usable space and it's a very student friendly space. Just, just a few uh, things of your residence. So, uh, uh, Sim, I would like to, say as uh, uh, it is compulsory for international students to stay in your hostel. So, how you are maintaining the food? Uh, do they cook by themselves, or you have the, your your own meal plan? Meal plan. Yeah, every student will have a meal plan. Um, so it's basically, um, it, let's say, you see all the single room, double room, and triple room. They all come with three meals a day. Okay, so you don't have to cook. There is no cooking facilities in your in your hostel in your dormitory. Okay, you can, you have a microwave, but there is no cooking facilities. So every student will have to dine at the cafeteria or our campus center, where that is the main cafeteria or our cafe, um, either in the library or in the student center. Yeah, so so they are not allowed to cook on campus. Okay, but but uh, you know that international students when they are coming to a campus, so they should they might have different choices, different food choices. Suppose Indians, they have different tastes. Uh, Bangladeshis, they have different choice from China. They could have different choice. So how do you maintain that? You have well, uh, well, cuisines? Well, um, our, our cafeteria is more like a buffet style. So we have different kinds of food. We have vegetarian, we have vegan, we have um, you know, non-vegetarian. So students are able to choose what they want to eat so it's like a buffet you know if you if you are muslim then of course there is a non-vegetarian or i mean sorry vegetarian or, or or food for muslim okay so 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 yeah so because because we're so many international students on campus okay we like like i said largely are from india you know uh, from india they are hindu or they are muslim as well so 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 our cafeteria has different kinds of food for all kinds of students even american students too you know some of them are muslim as well so you, you won't be surprised, you know, not everybody is Christian here, so. Okay. So, they definitely, but people has different choices of foods. So oh, yeah, it's absolutely. It's tough to manage. It's very tough to manage. So, that's why uh, most of the universities, uh, they are offering uh, for cooking by themselves. So, so that's the thing. But as you have meal plans, so definitely you should have the multiple uh, cuisines uh, to, yeah. you know, that, uh, to, uh, to offer them. So anyway, we have learned the things about the, your most of the parts of your undergraduate programs. And uh, as you have said about the master program that you are offering, I think you are offering master's program only in computer science or any other courses you are offering in the master's level. Well, our 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 master in um, 
we only have graduate assistantship for master in computer science as well as cybersecurity. So these two master degree program, students are eligible for $12,000 graduate assistantship, okay? We also have master degree in nanoscale science and engineering. We also have master in advanced technology, master in nanobioscience. So if you think of the nano side, all the master degree in nano side has no scholarship, has no GA. So students who are pursuing this area, we have to be financially self-sufficient to pay all expenses, okay? For our PhD program, our PhD program, we offer nanoscale science and engineering, uh, nanobioscience. Um, these PhD program students are eligible for $25,000 per year as a research assistant. So basically this is your job. You don't get a $25,000 like right now. You it actually, you have to work, you get paid. You get paid once, once every two weeks. That's how by the end of the year, you will get about $25,000. In addition for the PhD program, students are eligible for full tuition waiver. What it means is you don't have to pay for your tuition, but you only pay for your fees, okay? Your fees is about 500 some dollars per semester. That's all you pay, okay? And um, for the PhD program, it, it does the, the minimum requirement for the PhD program is you have to have a bachelor degree. You don't have to have a master degree for a, a, a PhD program. So let's say if you have a bachelor degree in, in material science, in chemical engineering, or even computer science and all that, you still are eligible to apply for the PhD program. It's not so much about your test score. It's not about what you have, you know, your, 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 your IELTS or your GRE score. It's about during your undergraduate degree or even your master degree program. What have you done? What kind of research have you done with your faculty member? Do you actually publish an article working together with your faculty member? So we want to see your not only your credential background, but your interest area in during your undergraduate degree. Of course, we also require three strong recommendations either from your employers or the faculty member. Exactly. But but I have few questions on PhD. Number one is that what is the duration of the program? Three years? PhD program? The PhD program, if you are coming from the bachelor degree, if you are accepted from a bachelor degree background to uh, the PhD, it will take about around five years. Five it years. All, yeah, it all depends on the research area too. I mean, every faculty member will have different research areas. Some research might take a little bit longer. That's why that's why faculty member loves to keep students for as long as they want. But again, it all depends on when you're going to finish your thesis and all that. Okay. okay. So minimum five years after that. Minimum bachelor. five years, yeah. Okay. So, so every year they will get the tuition fee waiver and the, uh, as a research as assistantship. Every year yeah. they will get till five years. Oh, you see, all this scholarship or or graduate assistantship is depending on your performance. For example, if you are a research assistant, okay, sometimes you show up, sometimes you don't show up, sometimes you don't finish a project. So your faculty will say, you know what? I don't think you are ready for doing research work on campus. So therefore you will lose your research, okay? So it's like a job, okay? If you don't perform well, you get fired. Okay. For example, for scholarship too, you know, students, yes. undergraduate students get $8,000 per year. Mm -hmm. What if the first semester they drop down to 2.0 over four? Of course, you know, even your government in Bangladesh too, you have to stay within a certain grade to maintain your scholarship. But but uh, in uh, PhD level, like uh, your uh, tuition fee is free, right? Tuition yeah. fee be waived, waived. So it, it will be waived uh, till five years, or it can. Oh yeah! Be... Oh yeah! If you okay. continue to maintain your research, which is your stipend, your your twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So when we first offer you twenty five thousand dollars plus full tuition waiver, it's gonna go with you throughout your education, unless you fail to maintain. Um, 3.0 GPA, of course, right? And then maintain your research area with the faculty advisor. Okay, so every year, uh, 25,000 US dollar uh, research assistantship and also the tuition waiver will continue till five years until and unless you did, uh, do not pay, student do not pay. And one more thing that I need to know that uh, if they have masters, you have to complete masters, then in that case, how, what kind of duration they should do, they will do in PhD level? Oh, it's about three years. Two years. Three. 
Three years, sorry, three years. Three years okay. yeah. And and as we know that for research program, uh, uh, always uh, they need to look for a supervisor or a professor to you know that to uh, so to send them the proposal and to be it should be approved by them. So what what will be the situation in ter in terms of uh, with your university? Well, um, usually you see, we, you, usually when students apply for PhD program, okay, they will same same as like other students, they will submit all the applications, recommendation letters, and stuff like that. And then a group of faculty members will get together once a week to review your credential, to look at what research area uh, is actually matching their interest. So the faculty can pick and choose which student they want, which student will fit their research area and all that. So that once once you're accepted, faculty member will come together, okay, and find out your research area and eventually will reach out to the student individually and say, continue talking continue talking about your stipend and stuff like that. So, so the okay. process will take about three so, months. So, uh, so by the students, they don't need to directly contact the supervisor. So once they will apply, so you will assign the supervisor to them to... No, we, 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 we don't assign. The faculty members, the advisor, the faculty we have the advisor to, will get together and choose a pool of students who are accepted and say, okay, I want this student, it matches my interest area. And then the advisor will contact the student directly and say, hey, you know what? I have your resume here. I really like your interests, you know, in the area of your research, I want to work with you. So they are working behind the scene, continue with the student until they get the stipends and all that. Okay, because I understood the point. Yes, yes, I understood the point of the same, but the thing is that student will approach first to the admission office or to the professor? First student will, will approach by, first student will have to submit everything to the admissions office. Admission office. So yeah. the, can they apply through us, apply through your agent? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah, the so student can after, apply through you directly. Okay. And then we will compile all the documents and all that, and then share with the faculty members. Faculty. They are, now I understood. Now I understand. Faculty will decide uh, whom to take, whom not to take. Okay, fine. I understood about the PhD level. But the master's program, you have said that you have only graduate assistantship only for computer science and only for the cybersecurity. Right. And other programs, nanoscience or other programs, so you don't have any uh, graduate assistantship. But uh, normally, Mm, how many durations are the master's program? Is it one year or two years? The duration is two years. Two years. So how is right. the tuition fees? How much is the the tuition fee per year? Thousand some dollars too. I can't remember. Maybe eight thousand six hundred dollars per semester. So it's almost seventeen thousand per year. Uh yeah. So basically, basically for, basically for um the master degree, whether you have. GA or not? No, sorry. If without GA, without the or without the graduate assistantship, you will you will spend about thirty six thousand dollars. I would say for two years. Again, because because the mass the master degree student are not student can choose to live outside the campus. So that's why. So, 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 so I'm saying that without graduate assistantship, they need to spend around thirty four thousand US dollar for two years, right? Right. So if they get if they get a graduate assistantship, so then it will be like ten thousand for two years because they are getting twenty four thousand per year, right? Yeah. So, okay. So, but for master's program, I I, I know I know that that you need GRE, right? You yes. uh, should have GRE for all courses. For okay, for the master degree, GRE is mandatory for computer science and cybersecurity. Okay. The GRE is not required by the nano program, whether it's a master, whether it's a PhD. Okay. okay. So for PhD also, you know, don't need uh, GRE. No. Okay, that's great. And what could be the ILTS? What could be the ILTS requirement for masters and PhD? Six point five um, IELTS seven seventy nine TOEFL, Duolingo one or three. It's the okay. same for computer science and cybersecurity as well. So Duolingo is for the time being, I mean, for the COVID-19 you have implemented or? No, we're going to continue. We are going to continue with Duolingo. Wow, great, great. So that's a good option because Duolingo is such an option that they can give it, you know, they can give it easily in, from their home. Right, right. It is, it is very cost, I mean, budget friendly when the fees are very low. Right. So dear viewers, uh, we have just 
discussed about their batch, uh, masters and phd program because amar bangladesh theke onek free amra pay thaki jara masters ebong phd level e jawar agro thake jader so tader masters program gulo dui bochhore tader khub specific masters প্রোগ্রাম আছে যেমন মাস্টার্স ইন কম্পিউটার আর মাস্টার্স ইন সাইবার সিকিউরিটি আর মাস্টার্স ইন ন্যানো সায়েন্স আর ন্যানো বায়ো সায়েন্স সামথিং লাইক সাম সাবজেক্টস দে হ্যাভ বাট ইন টার্মস অফ মাস্টার্স ইন কম্পিউটার ফিল্ড লাইক ইউ মে গেট গ্রাজুয়েট অ্যাসিস্ট্যান্টশিপ হুইচ ইজ নট এ স্কলারশিপ ডেফিনেটলি ইউ নিড টু ওয়ার্ক সাম আন্ডার সাম প্রফেসর এন্ড দে উইল গিভ ইউ দ্য পেমেন্ট ফর দ্যাট ওয়ার্ক সো ইটস লাইক এ স্যালারি সো ইউ উইল ওয়ার্ক ফর দেম এন্ড দে উইল পে ইউ স্যালারি so this graduate assistantship is 12000 per year so jodi amra dhori je apnar tuition fee ta hocche dui bochhorer 34 34000 usd so if you get 24000 in two years the graduate assistantship so apnar tuition fee ta kintu hocche matro 10000 us dollar and the, the the main thing is that for masters program kintu student der hostel compulsory na so you can stay by your own arrangement so it is not compulsory আর মাস্টার্স এর ক্ষেত্রে অবশ্যই আপনার আইএলটিএস 6.5 থাকতে হবে এবং আপনি ডুয়োলিঙ্গোটাও দিতে পারেন ইফ ইউ ফিল আনকমফোর্টেবল উইথ আইএলস ইউ ক্যান অলসো ডু ডুয়োলিঙ্গো হুইচ ক্যান বি ডান ফ্রম ইওর হোম এন্ড আরেকটা বিষয় হচ্ছে যে জিআরই টা শুধুমাত্র লাগছে আপনার মাস্টার্স এর ক্ষেত্রে শুধুমাত্র কম্পিউটার ফিল্ডের জন্য বাট আপনার ন্যানো সায়েন্স বা অন্য সাবজেক্টের জন্য কিন্তু আপনার জিআরই পিএইচডি ক্ষেত্রেও কিন্তু লাগছে না এবং uh same masters program uh, do you offer masters program in september only right in fall only uh, um we offer the master program spring and fall semester spring and, and fall that's semester. for cyber security cyber security only in september only in september yeah the rest and, uh, the exact, year exactly exactly and phd j factor holo seta hocche phd apni bachelor level theke aste parben if you have bachelor program if you have complete bachelor with if you have the research proposal articles or publications so definitely you can apply apni kintu bachelor korar pore application korte parben for phd ebong apnake kono supervisor er madhye application korte hobe na you don't need to uh, require you don't require to approach to the supervisor directly you can apply through prominent amra uh, apnar admission to process korar pore supervisor or faculty will contact you for the selection এবং পিএইচডি ক্ষেত্রে যেটি ভেরি অ্যাট্রাকটিভ অপশন হচ্ছে যে আপনার ব্যাচেলরের পরে কিন্তু আপনার পিএইচডি হবে পাঁচ বছরের এবং মাস্টার্সের পরে হবে সেটি তিন বছরের হ্যাঁ আর যেটি হচ্ছে যে পিএইচডির ক্ষেত্রে আপনার টিউশন ফি ফ্রি থাকছে দ্য ফর দ্য হোল কোর্স এবং পাশাপাশি আপনি টোয়েন্টি ফাইভ থাউজেন্ড রিসার্চ টোয়েন্টি ফাইভ থাউজেন্ড ডলার ইউ ক্যান গেট অ্যাজ এ রিসার্চ অ্যাসিস্ট্যান্টশিপ সো ইট ইজ অলসো লাইক এ স্যালারি লাইক লাইক স্যালারি নট এ স্কলারশিপ সো ইউ নিড টু ওয়ার্ক for the professor and they uh, they will pay you the salary so phd ketri kintu everything is free tuition fee free and you are also getting the stipend uh, as a research assistant so it's a very good option definitely jara apnara uh, phd korte chaachen jara chemical engineering ba material science ba jara uh, computer science jara lekha pora korechen tara kintu phd level e ei subject gulote application korte paren definitely and prominent consultant uh, can help you in that part PhD কিন্তু সম্পূর্ণ আপনি ফ্রি তে করতে পারছেন সো ইফ ইউ স্টিল ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ এনি কোশ্চেন ইউ ক্যান অল অলওয়েজ আস্ক আস আমরা আপনাকে সেভাবে সহযোগিতা করব সিম জাস্ট উই নিড টু নো अबाउट দ্য অ্যাপ্লিকেশন প্রসেস ফর পোস্ট গ্র্যাড লেভেল আই মিন ফর PhD হোয়াট কাইন্ড অফ ডকুমেন্টস ইউ নিড এন্ড ফর মাস্টার্স হোয়াট কাইন্ড অফ ডকুমেন্টস ইউ নিড দো উই নো দ্যাট ইউ নিড ট্রান্সক্রিপ্ট আইএলস অল দিস থিংস বাট অ্যাপার্ট ফ্রম দ্যাট হোয়াট কাইন্ড অফ এডিশনাল ডকুমেন্টস ইউ নিড ওয়াল ফর দ্য ফর দ্য PhD প্রোগ্রাম উই নিড এট লিস্ট three recommendation letter mm-hmm. your a statement of purpose why would you want to choose to study nano engineering or nano science okay and then the most current resume so basically your transcript three recommendation letter okay and then your recommendation SOP. Uh, recommendation three letter you need uh, fantastic yeah, three, but from, yeah, three, uh, from yeah. whom from whom only from uh, so, the lecture Teacher? Well, it all depends on the student, right? I mean, if, if the student has done some kind of project with with a faculty member, you get the mm-hmm. recommendation from the faculty member. So depending on, you know, somebody who actually works very closely with with the student. Okay, that's great. That's great. And for masters? For master, we only need um, sorry for nano program. We also need the same thing, pretty much. Okay. The same thing. same thing same thing. yeah and for, for computer science and cyber security we only need one recommendation letter exactly 
and it's now the most vital part because when people are choosing canada choosing usa choosing some big countries where they are going to invest a lot of money for their education oh, so they of course they are of course they are looking for the future they are looking for the uh, future goal i mean what could be happen after their study so what are the opportunities you have in usa after graduation or after study well um you know like a you, you can actually do a research in Google and look at look at the job market compared to job market uh, to Canada or to UK to Australia or New Zealand. You will see that there are a lot of job opportunity in the United States. Okay, so first of all, in order to prepare yourself, you should study hard. Okay, and because we also in do offer internship. So I think I will encourage international students to do internship because the internship experience will show out your resume when you are ready to apply to a company. As, especially, you know, um, don't just study and get straight A because a company wants to look at what have you done other than just, you know, reading your textbooks and all that. So, so yeah, so, you know, do a little bit Google and, and find out because like I say, even though you heard about stories about immigration, stuff like that, but when, when you are international students with the F1 status, when you enter the United States, things change, okay? You will get work permit easily, okay? Two, one, one year to two, three years, okay? It's very easy. You get approved easily. Plus with the help of, of, of my office, you know, giving you a list of over 100 companies you can pick and choose. So that's why that's that's the best way if you think about the future because when you google canada uk there are not many jobs opportunity there, you know opportunity there you know because they are not as big as the, the the united states even with australia too i mean there are so many issues at, at australia university right now you know that that um there are not enough jobs okay so yeah so think about that do i think it's easy for you yourself you know as a student spending so much money your parents money to, to to choose a university regardless of where you go ask yourself after you finish your study what would you want to do employment right so google let's say if you want to go to canada google the employment just put down uh, international student job opportunity canada job opportunity australia job opportunity you know usa you can find there are more jobs in this country than anywhere else Exactly. So this is the thing is that the viewers of what Sim said, uh, after a study, uh, after a study, by a stay-back option, especially business program, one year stay-back option, engineering and sciences, another two more years stay-back option. Definitely, it's a very good opportunity that you don't need to come back, you can work there as a full-time worker. And after that, definitely, there is some high-skill migration program. So far, I know after that you can apply for that as well, if there is an opportunity. And uh, uh, Sim, I would like to uh, know one more thing that about the PhD program. So do you have any intake restriction for PhD program or they can apply throughout the year? Well, we have two, we have two intake. One is spring semester, which is in January, and one is in fall semester, which is in August, September. For, for PhD level, right? For all the programs, for all the programs that we have, we offer you know not not undergraduate. For all the master PhD, we offer spring intake and fall intake, except for cybersecurity, only fall intake. Okay. For undergraduate, okay. for undergraduate degree, we only have fall intake. Uh, four intake, four. Yeah. Just fall okay. semester. Okay. Okay, and, and one more thing that for PhD level, uh, is there any any like limitations of seats, quota, something like that? I mean, that I mean, there is some limited options. There is there is no limited, except for sometimes faculty members are looking to looking to apply for grant. It all depends on how much money they get it from the government. You know, they get it from private organization. Okay, that's great. So anyway, we are just end of the live session and uh, uh, like we had a very good discussion with you Sim. we have covered the whole things and uh, uh, dear viewers actually in this university um, mostly from south asia they're starting masters and phd over there a very fantastic university for research especially in nanoscience and computer 
and in the job market uh, they have said they have connected uh, they are connected with over 100 companies uh, they are connected with them and you can easily find a job through their career office so it could be a great platform for you who are looking uh, to build up your career in computer and nanoscience as well so uh, see any anything you would like to discuss that we have not discussed earlier anything we have missed out do you have any any point to, to be discussed from you well um I, I think i pretty much uh talk about everything you know we talk about you know the job opportunity we talk about internship because like i said you know you student can do internship after two semester with suny Pali. the internship is basically working for company outside the campus you know it can be in hawaii it can be california it can be in anywhere so uh, but I think I want to share this important message with the student. Okay, you have to decide where is your in, what is your interest area. Okay, and pursue the, your dream. Okay, not everybody can pursue computer science or you know. So so you have you have to think about. So you have to think about you know what's what what is your best interest. Okay, and then and then and then do some Google. You know do 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 some research. You know the 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 you know the reputation of the university. And then by the end of the you know your 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 degree program, you know ask the university a very smart questions. How do you provide me and helping me to seek employment after I finish my study? Don't go to the placement center or career center. That basically they will give you hundreds and hundreds of companies' name, and then you have to Google everybody. You don't even know which company are hiring international students. We don't want to waste your time, okay? So yeah, so so do your research. Ask the ask the university. If the university say yes, we do separate our domestic company with company that hiring international students. Then I think you should consider that. Exactly, exactly. So dear viewers, uh, still uh, I would like to say that uh, this uh, live session uh, will be posted in our timeline uh, and will be there for permanent uh, permanently and you can view it at any time whenever you want and also it will be published in our youtube channel as well so also you can see that uh, uh, through our channel as well so sim thank you so much thank you so You're much uh, for having your wonderful time with us and really i think we had a very good discussion very informative discussion we had and hopefully um, after the pandemic definitely we'll be expecting some students because you have very fantastic scholarship and graduate or research assistantship option which i think students could prefer uh, definitely uh, we'll look into it and uh, thanks for your uh, cooperation and support all the time so any last word you'd like to share with them before closing the live session well i would say uh, stay safe stay healthy wash your hands and cover your face exactly okay. so stay home. Uh, the same thing i would like to say stay home stay safe and try to uh, research by yourself the things uh, for the future where you, where you want to uh, look yourself in which position so think for the university think for the right course and apply according to that so take care good night and uh, be with us in another live session tomorrow and uh, happy Ramadan as well and good night. Thank you so much. Okay, happy Ramadan. Have a yes. good day. Good night. Yes. Good night. <laughs>